Hi guys, my name is Vanessa Smedley and I'm a painter. Well, it's almost Valentine's Day, so I thought we would paint this nice little floral arrangement right here. We're not going to go overboard and make you paint some lovey-dovey couples or something like that, just in case a lot of you out there are single, just like I was for a million years. I don't want to shove anything like that in your face. So, let's do this! Here are the materials for today. Feel free to pause and screenshot, or they're listed in the description for you. Okay, for the background, I'm going to mix cobalt teal green, which is a brand new color for me, with pyrrole scarlet to gray it down just a little bit. Next, I prepare some Naples yellow, and I apologize for my paint beating up like this. It's a brand new palette and it's not conditioned yet. First, I'm taking my number 12 round brush and I am wetting the entire background all around the flowers. Now, sometimes I like to mask that kind of area out, but with this background, I think we can get away with not using the masking fluid. Now that I have that all wet, the first color that I lay in is just very, very light consistency of the Naples yellow. And then I come in with the cobalt teal blue on the other side. And guys, isn't this like the most beautiful color? Teal is pretty much my favorite color in the universe. I'm just laying in thicker consistencies of that paint and then spraying it as I need to in order to keep the paint moving. Next, I prepare some quinacridone magenta, and wow, that new palette is really fighting me. It's like World War III up in here. I've let all of that completely dry, and now I'm coming back in with the quinacridone magenta, and I'm adding in some of these pink tulips. I'm coming in with a base coat, and then adding some darker consistencies to add some of the shading and detail. I'm coming in with that exact same color, only very watery, and I'm just adding a base coat to the entire vase here. I'll come back in later and add the detail, don't you worry. I'm going to mix up three greens using sap green as a base. The first one I add in a little bit of lemon yellow, and then just sap green by itself, and then sap green with Payne's Gray added to it. I'm starting out by using the sap green and lemon yellow mix, and I'm just using that for a base coat on all of these leaves and stems. And then I come back in with some sap green to add some, some shadow and some detail, but I decide it's spreading too much, so I'm going to discontinue that. So for the rest of these, I'm just adding a nice flat coat of the lemon yellow and sap green mix. Real quick, I just add in that teal mix for a little line across here. I think that's pretty much just the pane of glass. Next, I grab a pretty watery consistency of Payne's Gray, and I'm going to use that to work on the windowsill. So I'm just wetting this first, and I'm going to drop in the Payne's Gray, and I'm actually going to drop in just a little bit of that quinacridone magenta to the very far left side, and then also just a little bit of the Naples yellow to warm it up in a place or two. Next, I'm using that same mix of Payne's Gray, and I'm just adding the wrinkles, folds, and shadows of this fabric. And on the edges, I'm softening that with just clean water on my brush. One random fact about Valentine's Day is that Valentine's Day cards did not become mass produced until the 1840s. And a lady named Esther A. Howland, known as the mother of the American Valentine, is the one who's credited for mass producing Valentines. So we have her to thank for all of this nonsense. And then I use that same mix of Payne's Gray to come back in and do the shadows on the white tulips. Mm -hmm. 
And then I add another layer of the quinacridone magenta on top of the pink ones. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just adding in more shadow and then I'm also softening that at the top and around the edges with clean water. For the shadows on the vase, I'm actually just coming in with Payne's Gray, a very watery mix of that, and I'm glazing over the top of this pink. Now the transparency of the watercolor allows you to see the pink underneath it, and then I'm adding a little bit more of that pink down a stripe in the middle, and we will add the detail much later, because right now it's looking very, very flat. It's time to add some detail into the greenery. So I'm taking both the just plain sap green and then the mix of the sap green and paints gray and going back and forth between these two mixes, just adding and softening, adding and softening with clean water around the edges. I am kind of skipping around a little bit so that they don't bleed into each other. Um, either that or I'm just leaving a little bit of a gap in between the two colors so that they don't bleed onto each other. So what is it that I have against Valentine's Day? Well, currently really nothing because I have an amazing husband who always makes sure that I have flowers and chocolate and whatever else and that we go out to dinner, blah, blah, blah. I mean, that's great. But for 30 some odd years, I was always, always single on Valentine's Day. And in, at school, in college, that kind of stuff, it's always such a big deal when everybody else gets flowers and you don't blah 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 so for a long while i was kind of one of those people who would wear black on that day and just be in the most horrendous mood until i finally realized it's all just nonsense anyway who cares your worth is not determined by flowers and chocolate here i'm just darkening up the paints gray This is where we're gonna to start to turn this vase a little bit more 3D. So I'm taking a very old acrylic brush that has very stiff, short bristles, and I'm using clean water, and I'm just scrubbing a little bit, and then dabbing it out with a shop towel. And that is going to allow some highlights to come back into this, and it will begin to make it look like it's a round object. And we will add some more detail later. I added a little bit of alizarin crimson into my magenta mix, and now I'm coming in with a very watery mix of that to cover this heart. Then I come down towards the bottom of it and add a little bit more pigment for the shadow. Next, I'm using some Payne's Gray to create some definition in this little vase of baby's breath. I'm using it on both the flowers and on the vase. And then we'll have one more round of adding in some more definition with the quinacridone magenta. So I have to tell you this, but as I was looking up facts on Valentine's Day, I found out that Americans spend $2.6 million on Valentine's Day for their pets. <laughs> yeah, you know that schnauzer is going to be totally offended if it doesn't get flowers on Valentine's Day. <laughs> okay, so here's my secret weapon on making this face look even more 3D. I'm coming back in with some white gouache straight out of the tube and I'm adding that for these dots of light and for the highlights on either side, especially the side where more of the light is coming in on the right. I'm also blending out this white gouache with a little bit of water as well. You can, you can move it around really nicely. Thank you. 
Next, I'm mixing up the color for this book. So I'm using alizarin crimson and adding just a little bit of cadmium yellow to it. Then I'm wetting that entire area and then I begin dropping in that color. As I get towards the bottom, I'm obviously adding in more and more pigment because that's where the spine of the book is and it's in shadow. I've allowed that to dry and now I'm coming back in and I'm adding some more pigment to the spine of the book. Towards the bottom, I'm gonna add more and more pigment and then some Payne's Gray to darken it up. And then I should have waited until that dried and then done the top of the book, but I forgot and forged onwards and then it bled a little bit too much for my liking, so I got out my shop towel. This was totally risky, but I decided to add in a little bit of that alizarin crimson mix back into the vase because it kind of was coming off purple, but it's really supposed to be pink. So I was just adding a little bit of that in and I think I just got away with it. Speaking of too much gray and not warm enough, I decided that I needed to come back in with a very watery mix of Naples yellow and add that to the windowsill here because there's a lot of sunlight coming in and it was just too gray. Now I do love a lot of dramatic darks and lights, so I'm coming back in and adding some more of the Payne's Gray mix to the darkest areas here and making it even darker. And here I'm adding more detail here and also just a hint of Naples yellow to warm it up in a few places. And then I use my green and come back in with a tiny little brush to do these baby's breath stems. And I'm wondering, do you call them baby's breath in other countries or do you have a completely different name for them? Let me know in the comments. I decided I needed a little bit more variation in the color of these, so I've added a very light watery glaze of both lemon yellow and hooker's green in a couple of different areas. And I just decided to darken up the shadows just a little bit with some more Payne's Gray. So if you're talking about Valentine's Day candy, you should tell me in the comments what your favorite is. But I actually really like those conversation hearts with the little messages on them. I mean, they're kind of controversial because a lot of people say that they're really chalky, but I just love the dadgum things. Maybe I'm a weirdo. Okay, definitely I'm a weirdo. And here I'm adding a glaze of Payne's Gray towards the bottom of this book to give it some more of a shadow. Then I add a little bit of detail to the window frame here just with some Payne's Gray and then I add a stripe of um, quinacridone magenta mixed with a little bit of carbazole violet and a little bit of Payne's Gray as well. Then I add in an impression of the details on the side of the book. I'm just using Payne's Gray and I'm not going crazy with detail. You don't want it to be the focus of the painting. Then I add some shadows to the heart and soften it with clean water. And then I add in an impression of the pattern on the fabric. Again, you don't want it to be the focus of the painting. For some final detail, I'm getting out my very tiny number zero brush with some just plain white gouache straight out of the tube, and I'm adding some of these very bright highlights on the sides of the flowers and stems and things like that.
And here's the finished product, all dried and with the tape removed and signed. And man, that one had a lot of detail, I'm not gonna lie. And there you have it, a nice little floral arrangement that maybe you can share with your sweetheart. Or if you were like I was for eight million years and single, you can burn it and make yourself feel better. <laughs> Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, all that fun stuff because that's how this channel gets to grow. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time.